Welcome everyone. I'm Reverend T.J. Mack. We are the Union Congregational Church of Hancock. We are a United Church of Christ denomination. We believe no matter who you are, where you live, where you work, who you love, no matter, no exceptions, you are welcome here. We have some upcoming services. I just want to point out um, this Christmas Eve on Friday will be here at 7 o'clock recording the service on Facebook Live. Sorry, that came out just like we were gonna be here. And that's the, that's the change. We are not gonna to be together in the sanctuary. We're gonna be on Zoom. Boy, I gotta get this right. We're gonna be on Zoom. It's in your messenger from Vicki, and we'll, we'll be again. Because of that, we have candles at the back of the church and in the fellowship hall for you to pick up and take home for the lighting during the silent night. And we are still looking for three or so readers for the eight readings and the Christmas Eve lessons and carols. Um, let Vicki know or myself know if you're wanting to do that. December 26th, the, the Sunday following Christmas, there'll be 
an open sanctuary here. There'll be um, carols and prayers. There won't be a very organized service, but people can get together and sing some of their favorite Christmas carols and, and have a, a service, a, a very laid back service led by one of our deacons. January 2nd will be a very high spirited service of readings and carols um, that was created by a Bangor Theological Seminary classmate of mine. And that should be great fun. And on the 9th, Deacon and Reverend Nick Davis will be our guest preacher, and that is the Sunday that we will have communion in January. So are there other announcements? Some birthdays. Um, Sheila has a birthday tomorrow. Happy birthday, Sheila. And Mary Angela has a birthday on Tuesday. Happy birthday, Mary Angela. Jennifer Ashmore has a birthday the 27th. And Marcia Stratton has a birthday on the 30th. So send some cards or make some calls. Let, let them know you're thinking of them on their birthdays. And there's an anniversary for Keith and Pam Bowie on the 30th as well. So, seeing no other announcements, let's center ourselves and prepare our hearts and minds for worship. And then let's stand in body or spirit and join in singing our introite. to worship. All through this season of Advent, we have encountered hope, peace, and joy. Today, Today we will hear the story of surprising commitment. We will learn Mary and God's wonderful love. Today we will be challenged to believe in all that God can do. Open our hearts, Lord, that we may be ready for your love. Amen. While you're standing, we'll pass the peace with our American Sign Language. Peace be with you. And also, be with you. I am alone this morning lighting the advent calendar, but for all good reasons. My mom is tucked in safe in her new home, and my son is enjoying this weekend with his dad, who came home from the hospital after COVID. We will light four candles, and we will be willing to light every taper in our lives. For love asks for all that is needed, and then, for everything else, for this is how incarnation happens, how God comes. We light four candles, four hundred, four thousand more, whatever it takes to remind ourselves to live in love.
as ordinary and gentle as the holy welcome that turned the world upside down, comes hope, peace, joy, and love to illuminate our Advent. I will light candles in Christmas, candles of joy despite all sadness, candles of hope where despair keeps watch, candles of courage for years that are present, candles of peace where tempest lost days, candles of grace to ease and burdens, candles of love to inspire all my way, candles that burn all my You please rise and join in the singing of the children's hymn, O Come, O Come, Emmanuel.
children of any age, come up and join me on the steps. Hi, Sierra. Hi, Barbara. Thank you, Doug. Good morning. Can you scoot just a little bit? Thanks. So, what do I have this morning? What's this? Exactly like a magnifying glass. And what do they do? Yeah, they make everything look bigger is the way I thought of it. The bracelet gets bigger, the hand gets bigger. I brought this this morning because I thought of it when I was reading our scriptures. One of our scriptures, Mary, the mother of Jesus, said, My soul magnifies the Lord. I thought, wow. I wonder what she meant by that. She, by doing what God asked, made God bigger and more present in this world. And then I thought, well, what about us? What do we do that God asks that makes God bigger and more present in this world? And we do things every day. You got me thinking about this. Wednesday when you said, I'd like to sing a song. That's what Mary did. She sang a song of praise to God. And we praise God in all kinds of ways with the things we draw. You two both draw things all the time, beautiful things. And we dance our praise to God and we, we paint. And so there's many, many ways that we praise God. Mary's way was to sing a song with words and music and maybe dance. But she made God bigger in the world with her praise. And that's what we do too. And so, for those of you who don't know, Sierra is going to sing us a song that she learned for school. And that's her way of praising and thanking God for her voice this morning. I'm going to stand and you're going to sit. Take a deep breath. A farmhouse top, reindeer bows, hunter skittles in turquoise. Down through the chimney, lots of toys. Oh, for the little ones, Christmas toys. Ho, 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 who wanna go? Ho, 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 who wanna go? Up on the house top, click, click, click. Down through the chimney, good St. Nick. First comes the stocky little man. Oh, dear Santa, fill it well. Give her a dolly that laughs and cries, one that will open and shut her eyes. Ho, 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 who would it go? Ho, 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 who would it go? Up on the house top, clip, 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 down to the chimney with good St. Nick. Next comes a stocking of little Will. Oh dear. Yes, Phil. Here is a hammer with lots of tacks. Also a ball in a wood that cracks. Ho, 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 who wanna go? Ho, 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 who wanna go? Walk on the house top, click, click, click. Down to the chimney with a St. Nick. <laughs> God, again, we thank you for helping us to see what, what ways you want us to bring you more fully into the world and to share your love with others. This morning it was Sierra and her song, Let Us All Be Brave and Strong and Do What You Ask, What We Know in Our Hearts Is To Be True. Amen. to recover from that. <laughs> the Old Testament
Testament reading is from Micah 5, 2 through 5. But you, O Bethlehem of Ephrathah, who are one of the little clans of Judah, from you shall come forth for me one who is to rule in Israel, whose origin is from of old, from ancient days. Therefore, he shall give them up until the time when she who is in labor has brought forth. Then the rest of his kindred shall return to the people of Israel, and he shall stand and feed his flock in the strength of the Lord, in the majesty of the name of the Lord his God, and they shall live secure. For now he shall be great to the ends of the earth, and he shall be the one of peace. The New Testament reading is from Luke 1, 39-55. In those days, Mary set out and went with haste to a Judean town in the hill country, where she entered the house of Zechariah and greeted Elizabeth. When Elizabeth heard Mary's greeting, the child leaped in her womb, and Elizabeth was filled with the Holy Spirit and exclaimed with a loud cry, Blessed are you among women, and blessed is the fruit of your womb. And why has this happened to me, that the mother of my Lord comes to me? For as soon as I heard the sound of your greeting, the child in my womb leaped for joy. And blessed is she who believed that there would be a fulfillment of what was spoken to her by the Lord. And Mary said, My soul magnifies the Lord, and my spirit rejoices in God my Savior. For God has looked with favor on the lowliness of this servant. Surely, from now on all generations will call me blessed. For the Mighty One has done great things for me, and holy is God's name. God's mercy is for those who fear God from generation to generation. God has shown strength with their arm. God has scattered the proud in the thoughts of their hearts. God has brought down the powerful from their thrones and lifted up the lowly. God has filled the hungry with good things and sent the rich away empty. God has helped his servant Israel and in grace and remembrance of their mercy, according to the promise God made to our ancestors, to Abraham and to his descendants forever. The Gnostic Gospel is from Mary Magdalene 7, 1 through 4. I, she said, I saw the Lord in a vision. And I said to him, Lord, I saw you today in a vision. He answered me and said to me, Blessed are you that you did not waver at seeing me. For where the mind is, there is treasure. Thank you, Tamara. Please pray with me. O oh Lord, may the words of my mouth and the meditations of all of our hearts be pleasing to you, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. Today is, is the fourth of four Sundays in Advent. It is also the fourth of four Sundays in which we included a passage from the little-known Gospel of Mary Magdalene. I hope that this stretched your boundaries a bit and that you too found it enriching and enlightening. 
how did our forebears and how do we use the scriptures? We read them for comfort. We read them for wisdom. We read them for understanding our past, explaining our present, and looking to what the future may hold. Micah is likely chosen for this week's lectionary because early followers of Jesus reinterpreted the passage as a foretelling of Jesus coming as the Messiah. These words that Luke borrowed from Micah in the Hebrew tradition speak of the lowly shepherd boy David who became king. Luke puts the words on Micah, puts the words of Micah on Mary's lips, Mary the mother of Jesus. God chose an unlikely God-bearer by earthly standards. Our scriptures consistently speak of upsetting societal norms of power and wealth and status. I heard another theme resonating in, our, in each of our three scriptures this week. Blessed are you. Blessed are you from one of the little clans of Judah, one that will be the bearer of peace. Blessed are you, Mary, the teenage, unwed, mother of God, and blessed is the fruit of your womb. Blessed are you, Mary Magdalene, that you did not waver at seeing the risen Christ. Blessed are they, blessed are we, blessed by God. How easy it is to forget that when instead of God's voice, we are, we are bombarded with the voices of humanity. Parents, siblings, teachers, friends, movies, television, internet. Sometimes we can lose God in all the chaos around us, but God never loses sight of us. This week, Tamara lit the candle of love, the theme of this fourth week of Advent. Love, God's unconditional love. It is not that we can do no wrong. We make plenty of missteps and mistakes. It is that there is nothing, nothing we can do that can separate us from the love of God. Imagine that, truly imagine it, feel it, understand it, take it in, take it into your heart. Believe it with your entire being. There is nothing that you can do that will separate you from the love of God, nothing. How can we, as the people of God, see one another and see ourselves as God sees us? How can we love one another as God loves us? Sometimes it helps to have visual aid. You know the concept of beer goggles? They distort one's vision to simulate the effect of alcohol in the bloodstream, and how that alcohol, for instance, affects your driving. I propose God goggles. <laughs> they could distort our vision. There you go. God goggles could distort our vision to help us see the world through the eyes of God, through the eyes of unconditional love. I keep my God goggles with me all the time. And sometimes I remember to put them on. When I do, it instantly changes my view, my outlook, my perspective. I see through the eyes of love. Can we see the people in the local police report through the eyes of God? Thefts, drug trafficking, driving to endanger, harming a child, taking another's life. It is sometimes hard to see all people as children of God, but our God goggles help us to change our perspective. It doesn't mean that we don't hold one another accountable. It means we continue to love one another through our faults and failings. We continue to support one another in our efforts to improve ourselves and grow in our faith in God, in our faithfulness to God, and by extension, our faithfulness to one another. Can we see the people from small towns in Maine that have different priorities than we do? Or big cities in Maine or elsewhere that have different priorities than we do? 
Can we see the people that speak other languages, live on other continents, understand and worship God in different ways than we do? Can we recognize that no matter one's origins, they are capable of achieving great things for themselves and, yes, for the world? Can we recognize that God speaks to them in the same voice, in their own language, blessed are you? We all need love. It is healing. It is life-affirming. It is a blessing that God bestows on us without constraint and that we, in turn, can share with others, with all others. The angel in Luke's gospel was wearing God goggles. The angel recognized Mary as blessed. Mary, who by society's standards was to be despised or at best pitied when she became pregnant before her marriage to Joseph. The child in Elizabeth's womb easily recognized Mary and her baby as blessed. The child in Elizabeth's womb had not yet been conditioned by humans to hate or judge or condemn. In utero, we are still fully, 100% present with God. Elizabeth wore God goggles. She instantly recognized Mary as blessed. There was no word of shame or chastisement. There was only acknowledgement that Mary was honoring her holy agreement with God. There was joy. There was love. We recognize Mary as blessed in our scriptures, in our prayers. Why, again, why then do we need God goggles? Because it is not enough to see Mary as blessed. We need to see all people as blessed, as deserving, as whole and sacred children of God, regardless of their circumstances, regardless of our opinion of them. Mary recognized herself as blessed. She sings praises to God. But I wonder if she had to scramble to find her pair of God goggles when, we, when she received that news from on high. Again, in her culture, women had no rights, and women without a husband that had conceived a child were subject to death by stoning. 2,000 years later, we have yet to eliminate the stigma of childbirth outside of marriage. We have yet to remove the double standard that exists for women and for men regarding premarital sex. We need our God goggles. Thinking of the other Mary, Mary Magdalene, blessed is she also. She wore God goggles. She was able to see the inner Jesus, the spirit Jesus, even when he was physically removed from her presence after his death. She did not lose sight of him. She was one of the first apostles, one of the first people who experienced what we too can experience, Jesus in our hearts, minds, and souls. The women that are central to our text this morning, they are full of wonder and hope in what God can do. They trust God and accept that all things are possible. They are blessed and it is a blessing that they heard, they saw, and they believed. Blessed are you. Blessed are you. If we can recognize it in the imperfect, sometimes doubting humans in our scriptures, what is holding us back from recognizing it in one another and in ourselves? We are all worthy. We are all called to do holy work, to allow our souls to magnify the Lord. Blessed are we. Blessed are we that never saw Jesus in the flesh. Blessed are we that wear our God goggles, allowing us to see the inner Jesus, the spirit of Jesus. Blessed are we that wait in joyful hope to celebrate his coming into this world, past, present, and future. Blessed are we that let love into our hearts, minds, and souls. Blessed are we that allow our vision to be distorted, seeing the world through God goggles. Blessed are we that see the world through the eyes of God, through the eyes of love, unconditional love. Amen. Please join in singing 
Please rise in spirit or body and join in singing Love Came Down at Christmas. in our service where we offer our prayers of joy, of gratitude, and of need. Our God is ever-present and always listening. This morning we hold in our prayers Nancy and Cynthia and Ellsworth on the death of Nancy's only sibling, Ross, who died December 11th after a brief illness, and the family of Randy Mack in Sauk City, Wisconsin, who died unexpectedly on Thursday of this week. We have others from among us. From our friend Tom, who uh, is recuperating from his fourth surgery for bladder cancer and awaiting results this week. For Tom. Okay. And I apologize to those online. I'm not able to see the video to see if you're typing in the chat. But type your prayers there. And possibly somebody will pick them up here, but otherwise we'll, you will be held in prayer. We continue to hold Peggy and Barb in prayer as they grieve the loss of their spouses. Hold Ruth Dietz in your prayers. She's had her hip replaced for a second time, the same hip, um, and is in recovery again. We pray that this recovery goes well and she heals and rehabs as it's supposed to work. Keep Myrna and Steve in your prayers. Steve is at MDI Hospital with pneumonia and getting some good help and good recovery um, for his pneumonia and for his stroke. Um, and so Myrna, Myrna says, thank you for your prayers and your calls and your offers of help. She will take you up on the offers of help once Steve is home, but right now things are manageable. Thank you all. Yes? Um, I'd like to send prayers to my aunt, um, where he is, who any day is going to pass. Um, For Lynn's aunt, who any day is going to pass. Multiple cancers, but I want to say that people have a lot of spiritual Rabbi from Pastor. Um, that her courage and acceptance, I never thought it was going to be possible because she didn't seem like that kind of person. And her sense of humor is going to guide you in because you know what? You can sit in a bed and type with your phone in it. <laughs> and so she's shopping. <laughs> and basically, what she said to my sister, God bless her, she said, I'm going to shop till I die. <laughs> So I pray that she goes peacefully. What's her name? Janice. Janice. 
Janice. Prayers for Janice for a peaceful passing, and prayers for Lynn and all who love Janice. From Patty online, for my sister-in-law Sandy, who has COVID, she is at home and feels like she has a bad cold. Yeah. I'd also like to add uh, prayers for my cousin Daryl and my uncle Sonny, who both are suffering with suffering with COVID right now. Prayers of Thanksgiving that Jim is home. Tamara mentioned Austin is with him this weekend. Um, prayers for his continued recovery. And continued prayers for Jack in Georgia and, and Dolores, his wife, supporting him. Prayers for Maura Worcester, the recent Across America founder who um, had a stroke about a week and a half ago. I haven't seen any updates Pray that he is recovering either at home or in the hospital. He actually was at Arlington in a wheelchair wow. with support, mm -hmm. but they are working to get him in there. Incredible. Okay. Prayers for Clayton and Marsha and for Kenny and Marsha. For my friend Annie in Lincolnville. For Eric and Kenny and Dustin at Armando's Golden Acres. For Derek Connors, for Betty J and her stepdaughter Molly, for Eleanor's stepdaughter Holly, and for Tom and Judy's son Andrew and his family. Prayers continue for Danny and Clementine, and for the health and safety of all in our schools. We offer our prayers for those who do not wish to be named, those suffering chronic pain, those awaiting diagnoses, all affected by memory loss and its effects on daily living, all those living with depression, and all caregivers that they are also cared for. Compassionate God, we bring to the light of your love some of the many shadows in today's world. Where sorrows are too tender, too raw, too unknown to even be named or shared. We pause now for you to hear what is in our hearts. Hear us, O oh God. Hear all of our prayers spoken and silent. We remember with thanksgiving the faithful who have gone before us. We pray for everyone who is in any need today, for the lonely, for the sick in body or mind or spirit, for all people who are anxious at this time of year, for our elders in the nursing home, for people who could not find work and those whose work is not life-giving for them. We pray for our own lives. We pray that Mary's song of joy and Joseph's loyalty will be magnified in us. Fill us with the breath of Advent, stir us to extend ourselves beyond what we thought possible. As a beloved community and as individuals, please help us to offer not only our prayers, but our hearts and hands, that each of us may be someone's answered prayer, as each of us has our prayers answered. O oh God, hear all our prayers shared this day, and hear this prayer as we join our voices together praying the words that Jesus taught to his disciples. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen.
are not passing, oh, sorry, we are not passing an offering plate. Here is something to be thankful for, a way to count your blessings. standing and join in our closing hymn with joy draw water in our black hymnal number 109.
May the God of justice be your path, the Lord of mercy be your guide, and the spirit of love be your light, this day and forevermore.